we're starting with the unit circle, the other quadrants. Um, something that, that comes before discussing all the quadrants is why we discussing the quadrants. Um, the first thing that I want to discuss before that is um, the coterminal angles. So it's always interesting if we can express um, an angle that is a, a few revolution into an angle that is less than a full revolution, um, either in a positive side or a negative side. What I do right now is I show that um, a few angles that it can be um, done, um, it, it can, you can figure out um, a coterminal angle for them that is less than one uh, revolution. Uh, let's start with this example. Find the smallest positive angle coterminal with theta equal to 7 pi third. So how do I figure out what's the smallest positive angle coterminal with this angle? Um, this seems like more than one revolution. Uh, more than, um, it's more than a revolution. It's an angle bigger than, that is bigger than a revolution, full revolution. Um, so what I do is I subtract one revolution from this to figure out what the coterminal angle is. And if it still was bigger than one full revolution, I would subtract another one from that. So in this case, 7 pi third minus a full revolution will give me common denominator and it gives me pi third. So what happens is that with 7 pi third, after you travel pi third, you go one full more revolution over here, you end up at the same end point. And that's why the two of them are coterminal. Um, so this and the angle 7 pi third are both ending at that same terminal point. What does that mean in terms of cosine and sine? It means that the, the two coterminal angles will have the same sine and cosine. That is the significance of two coterminal angles. And so we usually find the smallest positive angle coterminal with theta to be able to find the sine and cosine for angle theta. Let's do one more example, and then we discuss the other quadrants. Another example, again, find the smallest positive angle coterminal with theta equal to 14 pi third. So as usual, I start, seems like it at least have a revolution in it. So I start with subtracting one revolution, one full revolution from it. Common denominator. I end up with 8 pi third. 8 pi third still is bigger than one revolution, so I subtract another one. Another 2 pi. 
And this is 8 pi third minus 6 pi third again, 2 pi third. Now this, if I subtract another 2 pi, I end up with a negative value. So this is the smallest coterminal angle with 14 pi third. If you calculate it, this one in degrees, you see that this is going to be 120 degrees. So it's, it's going to be the coterminal side of it is over there. And the sine and cosine for 14 pi third is going to be equal to the sine and cosine for 2 pi now, after I raise the board, we're going to come back and discuss the symmetries in the different quadrants. So, the next thing that we want to discuss are reference angles. Um, before discussing the reference angles, I want to connect angles, all angles that are, and their, their coterminal side ends up in any of the quadrants to an angle that whose co uh, the terminal side ends up in the first quadrant. Um, let's see. If we're in any, um, let's, let's start with an angle in the first quadrant. Angles in the second quadrant that are uh, symmetric about, about the y-axis, let's see. So this is x and y. This is angle theta. And then if I draw a, symmetri uh, a symmetric terminal side, that is, if I find a mirror image of the terminal side of theta over y-axis, I end up with these two, uh, with this uh, point. How is the x and y of this point related to x and y of that point? Since these two are the mirror image, uh, the x should be the negative value of this x, and the y should be the same value as that y. Second quadrant, x is negative, y is the positive. How is this angle related to theta? I can observe that since they, these two are mirror image of each other, this also should be theta. So whatever this angle is added to theta adds up to pi. So this angle the angle um, whose coterminal point is negative x and y is going to be equal to pi minus theta. So first thing I'm writing uh, sine cosine of pi minus theta is equal to negative x sine of pi minus theta is equal to y. So if I start with cosine theta equal to x and sine theta equal to y, cosine of pi minus theta is equal to negative x and sine of pi minus theta is equal to y by the symmetry. Can I find an uh, angle over here whose coterminal side is symmetric with this, co uh, with this coterminal side in the third quadrant? So this was the second quadrant. Now I'm looking at the fourth quadrant. So if I find the mirror image of the terminal side over x-axis this time, I end up with this coterminal, uh, with this uh, terminal point. 
how is this terminal point related to x and y? x is the same, obviously. y is the negative of that one. How is this angle related to theta? I can go around and I end up here. By symmetry of um, this terminal angles being mirror image of each other over x-axis, this angle should be also theta. Therefore, um, the, the remaining part, the blue angle, is going to be 2 pi minus theta. So according to that, in the fourth quadrant, cosine of 2 pi minus theta is equal to x, sine of 2 pi minus theta equal to negative y. There is one quadrant that I haven't connected to the first quadrant yet. Let's see over um, this symmetry. How does this work? If this angle is an angle whose uh, terminal side is symmetric um, with the, uh, as a symmetry of, of reflection over point origin, origin as the point of reflection, point of symmetry, um, then what happens? Over here, since we're symmetric about the origin, this x and this length and this length should be the same, but that's the negative value of that, negative x. And the y values, the length should be the same. But since it's the, in the fourth quadrant, we are going to end up as a negative value. How do we compare this angle to the original angle? By the symmetry, these two should be the same. Therefore, this angle is theta plus pi, pi being this um, half revolution, and theta added to it. So the last thing is that cosine pi plus theta is equal to negative x, sine pi plus theta equal to negative y. So using these symmetries, I can always find for any angle, oh, let me write this down. This was the third quadrant. Using the symmetries that we saw, I can always find um, for any angle with terminal point, terminal side or terminal point, in the second quadrant, I can always find an angle in the first quadrant that I, I um, that is comparable in sine and cosine value. For the third quadrant, I, I can also find an angle that is symmetry uh, with the symmetries in first quadrant that that I have to I can compare the sine and cosine values. For the fourth quadrant as well, I can always find one in the first quadrant that, that I can find um, the sine and cosine of it and, and then use that to find sine and cosine of the angle in the fourth quadrant. So it seems like we can always reference an angle in the first quadrant to find angles in the sine and cosine of the angles in the the second, third, and fourth quadrant. 
that is actually the reference angle. So it's the smallest positive angle that you can find in the first quadrant that has some sort of a symmetry with the angles that, that you're discussing. And um, so the next part of the part of the videos is going to discuss how we relate the reference angles uh, that we discuss, the important ones, pi six, pi fourth, pi third, and pi half to n zero to find um, the, the symmetric angles in the other quadrant.